everyone. So I recently completed my leveling journey on the classic Burning Crusade beta. I reached level 70 and throughout those couple tens of hours of leveling exclusively through questing, I learned and rediscovered so many important things that can make your life so much easier in classic. Not only while leveling, but also in general throughout the game. So I figured I'd compile a list and make a video out of it. If you've already been playing Classic for the last 18 months, there might be a lot of things here that you already know. Although there might be some obscure things here and there that you never knew about. But if you're a new or returning player to Classic and you want to give Classic TBC a shot, this video will help you a ton. Not only for leveling, but also at max level. So without further ado, here's 10 tips for new and returning players to Classic TBC. Number 1. Infinite inventory space with mail. So while leveling in classic, be it in Azeroth or Outland, you'll quickly find that your inventory space is a big issue that you'll be constantly fighting with. You'll often get a lot of items that are taking inventory space but that you don't necessarily want to throw away or bother going to a capital city to put them on the auction house yet. So for that, there's actually a way to get pretty much infinite inventory space by using the mailing system and alt characters. You see, if if you make a new character, even the level 1 works, you can send those items that take inventory space in your bags by mail to a different character and just let them sit there until you have time to sell them or use them yourself. You can hold pretty much an infinite amount of mail and the mail lasts for 30 days, after which it's automatically sent back to the sender. So you can keep juggling the mail back and forth infinitely by doing this. Keep in mind however that your mailbox only shows the 50 most recent mails that you received. So if you want a specific item that you sent a while ago and you know is sitting in the middle of your mail somewhere, you'll have a hard time doing that. But that's the only downside. Which brings me to number 2, guild banks. So because the mail tip can be tricky to organize items, you might want to send your bags to your bank alt so that he or she can actually hold the items in their bags. Or if you want, you could also make a whole guild bank for yourself. Creating a guild bank gives you a ton of inventory space for an incredibly good value. One guild bank tab gives you a whopping 98 slots of inventory for just 100 gold. Comparatively, the gigantic bag which sells for 1.2k in Shathrat only gives 22 slots. Keep in mind however that the more tabs you want to add to your guild bank, the more they will cost you individually, starting at 100 gold and going up to 5000 gold for the last tab. So it's up to you to decide where you want to stop and create a new guild with a new character. It does however require 9 signatures to create a guild from actually 9 different people with 9 different accounts. So you can't get someone to make 9 characters to help you with this unfortunately. You'll have to ask random people around Stormwind or Orgrimmar to sign your guild charter and offer them a gold or two as motivation. I mentioned gigantic bags, so let's talk about that. Number 3, new and bigger bags. Burning Crusade introduces the gigantic bags. Those are sold at Harris Pilton in Shathrat for 1200 gold each, which is quite a lot of gold, but if you can afford a couple of these early on, especially while leveling, it will really save you a lot of hassle. But I understand, not everyone has 4.8k gold to throw on some bags, so just keep in mind that the lower tiers of bags you get, the better the value becomes. For example, the gigantic bags end up costing 55 gold per inventory space, but comparatively, runecloth bags, which go for 4 gold in classic right Right now give 14 inventory slots. Those have a 0.28 gold per inventory value or 28 silver per inventory space. So you see how going down in tiers of bags gives you a better value. The point here is just to make sure to get enough inventory space in general to never have to throw away precious items that could have been sold for a lot of gold. That's the last thing you want to happen. Let's move on to leveling tips. Number 4. Always face your enemy. So you'll notice while leveling and trying to go through packs of mobs that you'll often get dazed and dismounted by trying to do that. Well, it turns out that this only happens if the enemy hits you from the back. Each hit received from behind has a 50% chance to daze you and if you're mounted up at that moment, you'll also get dismounted. So to avoid that, the trick is to do what is called strafe kiting. By default, your strafe keys are Q and E. And using the strafe keys makes 
makes your character rotate his whole body. So if you hold a strafe key and use your right mouse button, you can keep facing an enemy while moving away from them. And then add the jumping to that and you'll pretty much become undazable. I understand as a beginner this can be hard to execute, but give it a shot anyways. This can save you a lot of time from having to kill enemies or running from the graveyard. By the way, speaking of mounts, small bonus tip is that you can get your mount at level 30 in classic TBC as opposed to level 40 in classic vanilla, so make sure to grab that ASAP. Number 5. Leveling add-ons Add-ons deserve a video by their own, but let's mention a few add-ons that will make your life easier while leveling. The first one that comes to mind is Djunk. Well, this is the one that is currently working on the beta. There will probably be tons more add-ons that do this function in the live game. The most popular one being Leatrix Plus, but what Djunk does is it automatically vendors all the grey items for you. This will save you upwards of minutes every time you go to a vendor. You will not have to hover over all your your items anymore to figure out what's grey and what's green, and you can just press a button and every grey item gets vendored. The next most important add-on while leveling, I would say would be Questy, or any leveling guide add-on really. Questy shows you all the quests available in any zone on your map. It's super helpful because, be it in Azeroth or Outland, there's tons of hidden quests here and there that you might miss. Questy is good, but my personal favorite leveling add-on is Zygor. This one is a paid add-on. They're not sponsoring this video or anything by the way, it's just that I've been using Zygor for years now, and it helped me a lot. But what Zygor does is it gives you an actual leveling route in-game. It can even automatically detect what level you are and gives you a suggested route that you can follow to catch up with it, if you end up installing it midway through leveling. Another free alternative to Zygor is Azeroth Autopilot Classic. This hasn't been updated in years however, and it only goes up to level 40 I believe. I don't know if it is going to be updated for TBC, but go ahead and check it out by then, maybe it will. And obviously, there's tons of other small add-ons that can help you a ton depending on your class. As I said, I will make a whole video about add-ons eventually, so make sure to subscribe to not miss that when it goes out. But for now, let's move on. Number 6. Targeting macros and marking mobs So this tip is super useful while leveling or farming mobs in general. You'll often find that the type of enemy you need to kill for a quest or find for an item is often hidden among a bunch of other mobs or sometimes behind some sort of wall or contraption. This is where the targeting and marking micro comes to play. By doing slash target, you can target enemies anywhere they are and as long as they are in range of you, you can then mark them with a skull for example and you'll easily be able to see where they are, even if they are behind walls. This comes in very useful while leveling, as you'll often be asked to kill a specific type of mob and you'll find that there's tons of other useless enemies around. So this macro will save you a lot of time to that end. Make sure however to know the exact name of the mob, or at least the first few letters of his name, and then modify the macro with that after the slash target part. Then click or press the macro and you'll automatically target the closest mob that matches that name, given they're close enough in range of you of course. I use this macro all the time and it saved me a lot of hassle while leveling in the beta. Let's now move on to general tips while playing. Number 7, Ghetto Hearthing. This has been so useful for me on the beta. In TBC and Classic in general, you'll often find that you need to use your Hearthstone way more often than it has time to reload. The Hearthstone is still on a 1 hour cooldown in TBC, and probably the number one most frustrating thing to do is to deal with having to go grab your spells or going to the auction house in Stormwind or Orgrimmar and then having to fly all the way back to the Dark Portal to get back to whatever you were doing there. Because there are portals to the main cities in Shathrat, but there's no portals back. Well, unless you manage to find a mage of course, which isn't always feasible depending on where you are. So the trick here is that you can actually use your hearthstone even if it is on cooldown. You can do that by getting someone to invite you to a group or inviting them yourself and then giving them leader. And then going inside a dungeon, for example you could go to stockades in Stormwind or a Ragefire Chasm in in Orgrimmar and then just leaving the group. A few seconds later you'll receive this message saying that you will be automatically teleported to your Hearthstone location and voila, you just saved yourself the hassle of flying to the Dark Portal again. This is especially useful if you just leveled up and you need to grab new spells or got some items that you need to sell on the auction house. This will save you a lot of time. 
Obviously, this works in Stormwind or Orgrimmar because there's dungeons inside the city, but there isn't always going to be a dungeon around where you are by the time you need to use your Hearthstone, which is on cooldown. So this trick is limited in this way, just keep that in mind. Number 8. Meeting Stones In vanilla, meeting stones were completely useless. Their only job was to mark the entrance to a dungeon. In TBC, however, meeting stones can also be used to summon people. This is going to be a huge time saver for anyone who wishes to join or form a dungeon or raid group. You only need two people at the entrance to summon someone, unlike needing three people in vanilla, one of which needed to be a warlock. Speaking of warlocks, number 9, warlocks can now summon inside dungeons. You may or may not know, but in classic, you couldn't summon someone inside a dungeon or raid if they were outside. You actually had to send 3 people outside, one of which needed to be a warlock, to summon a person if they just joined your group or had to hearth to buy arrows or something. Not anymore in TBC. You can actually just summon people inside your dungeon or raid, given you have a warlock of course. And it doesn't matter where they are in the world. And finally, number 10, just some bonus small tips that I wanted to mention. Weapon skill is still a thing in TBC, and you might be that hunter that never had to level their gun skill, for example, and you might be getting a gun in TBC eventually, so you'll need to level up your weapon skills. Thankfully, there's a couple new AFK ways to do that in TBC. One that I found was near Black Temple. At the top, you will find this banished pit lord that you can indefinitely hit, and you will level your weapon skills. However, there are are a few mobs around him and you will need to kill them every time they respawn which is around 5 minutes. The absolute best way to AFK level by the way I think is still the Diremol North Ghosts I believe. Diremol North should be still easily soloable by a lot of classes at 70 so keep that in mind. Another minor thing, once you get your flying mount, if you're like me and you have a keybind to summon your mount, you might find that you will need to make a new keybind just for the flying mount, or use your current one for your flying mount and make a new one for your ground mount in Azeroth. Here's a small macro that I made that will allow you to summon the right mount depending on where you are, just so that you don't need to have two different keybinds for two different mounts. And finally, the moment you go through the dark portal, remember to buy new types of food or arrows from the vendors at Thromar or Honorhold. Those will make your leveling slightly faster and you won't need to use the old unreliable level 45 food, which is the only food type available from vendors in vanilla. And that's all for this video. That was 10 tips for new and returning players to Classic TBC. I hope you found something useful in this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Gaming Curios channel for more content like this. With that said, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.